I was just telling Julia before I went to else got on the call, I think a lot of churches coordinate their vacation schedule where all the staff are gone at the same time so that they're not just gone, you know, you know, they, they can actually have full teams at different points during the summer. So we'll see what we got here. We got uh, a lot of slides in, so we'll see if there's somebody there they'll present, if not. But I think you'll enjoy this, Tom, just to see where we're going with data. But we started this data accelerator in April, and the purpose of it, what we're solving for it is how might we use, how might we maximize data, analytics, and messaging to do the five things every church has to do to thrive and grow. And so if you think about it, every church has to figure out how to attract people, make them aware that they exist for the first time, to get people in the door the first time. And that's having the data to, but Nehemiah, with Nehemiah questions were tell me about the city and tell me about the people. And so we use that kind of data to help us attract people to the church and get people in the door the first time. Then under the second group, knowing your people, it's what do we do to keep them to close that back door? One of the things we discovered in earlier groups that if a person visits a church three times, 60% of those people make that their church home. And so we kind of learned there that the critical time for follow-up isn't after the first visit, but the second visit. And, uh, and then grow, whatever the growth model is that you have for your people, that um, uh, you know that you believe that you have you have a theory of growth that people do more of this activity if they whether it's small groups or taking the Sabbath or spiritual formation or sharing their faith or whatever that they they become more of a disciple so people enter that growth path and uh, almost always include a small group and then the last thing is multiply and we're coming to see that this is really the important one because the multipliers are the people who have. Uh, Julia, are you recording this? Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, as of now. Uh, <laughs> multiply. Um, are, are they multiplying the actual mission of their church through their giving, through their serving, through their leading, through their inviting, through their evangelizing, through their discipling, through their mentoring, through their advocating, etc. And so the first four of those attract, get, keep, and grow. There's a, there's a big difference between a very active church person and a multiplier. And so we're saying that an engagement, when we talk about the engagement accelerator, people are engaged because they're engaged in fulfilling the mission of the church. They, they're, they're not just a recipient of the mission of the church. And so that's, that's kind of one of the things we're learning. We, we kind of build off a um, something we call the inside engine where Data by itself, a piece of data by itself doesn't do any good. So you keep adding pieces of data until you can start doing some analytics. And analytics then leads to some type of insight or aha moment or a theory or a hypothesis of, of, of what you think you're seeing. And that leads to some ideas of what you might try, which leads to an action that you take. And then you get a result of that action, which gives you a new piece of data. And we want to go through that cycle as quickly as possible. So this whole, this whole data um, or this whole engagement accelerator is built on kind of going through that, that process as quickly as we possible in, the, in this kind of the spirit of the lean startup. Uh, concepts are always about three words, about building something, measuring the results, and then learning from it, and then doing it all over again. And so that's, that's the big thing. So the, their motto is think, or think big, start small, but move fast. And I guess that part, the move parts, the fast is missing from that, but I'll fix that. Um, churches that are involved will start reporting. I don't think Cornerstone is on the line. They're on their they're, yeah, vacation. Uh, Cathedral of Faith, they are all on vacation. Connection point, I think we have Lisa or Lisa, are you going to take us through this? <laughs> or Denise, Brooke? Brooke, I think. I didn't see Brooke respond. Okay, let me. So identify yourself. Hey, Lisa. It's, it's Lisa and Denise and Mike here. Great. Hey, Mike. Hey. Shall we up first? Oh, great. <laughs> All right. So, sorry, I just walked back in the room and I guess we're up, huh? So, yeah. The updates for us is, uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but that we were going to form this um, tech advisory um, committee. 
So that's been a huge opportunity for us. So we have some executives from a um, from Salesforce. We have a president of a um, IT company. Um, a variety of people on this team. And so one of the incredible things for us is it's just given us um, not only the expertise, but it's also just given us some bandwidth that we didn't have in this space. So that's been amazing. Um, we have been working on our Chicago project, which is where we- let's, let's come back to that one uh, first, Denise, is that I think I read, you wrote a little paper on this that I absolutely loved, as you know, but there's people like this sitting in the pews every week and to be tapped on the shoulder to join this, you know, a, a tech advisory committee. I think especially you churches that are in the Bay Area, this ought to be, don't put the burden of thinking of all the best ideas of yourself. I think these people can be far more creative than we can ever be. Yeah. Isn't that kind of what you're finding in the enthusiasm, uh, Denise? Yeah, it's been amazing. So even, you know, one of the guys, literally said he'd been praying for a year for God to give him a way to use um, what, what he does, what he has to impact his church. And wow. so he literally said this had been a year, uh, a year in the making prayer for him. Um, and so, you know, even when we were, so we were negotiating with HubSpot to, um, because we're doing some lead capture for the Chicago project we have, and so he jumped on the phone as just part of our tech advisory council, um, but super knowledgeable in this space. And he negotiated our contract for us and ended up getting us 40% off what they'd originally proposed us. And, and so that's just been super, super amazing. I mean, even we did a customer mapping where we walked through the attract, get, grow, uh, or attract, get, no, grow, multiply. Um, that we've walked through in this group and we did a customer journey mapping with the Salesforce team where they took us downtown to the Salesforce tower, kind of treated our group just like they would a customer that they were bringing in. But we did this through like the lens of the church. So it's just been some really incredible opportunities for us with that. Wow. Can us move on to Chicago project? Yeah. And so the Chicago project, again, that's part of where we're trying to capture those leads. We've done some videos specifically targeting that market. Um, we're trying to figure out how to establish relationships with people who we don't yet know. Um, and so we are um, working with HubSpot, building our website. Um, a couple of years back now, when did we get Connect.Church? Uh, yeah, so six months ago, kind of as we were, we were digging around in this, we found out like the URL connect.church was available out there. So we bought it. So we've just kind of had a setting. And so now we're beginning to launch our website for that, for kind of our virtual reality and, and trying as we're reaching some people outside of our, um, our region. And so we're just seeing, we're starting to get some movement and traction in that area. Right. And just, just to fill in for those that don't know the back or forgotten the background is you mapped out where all your online visitors were listening and there was an incredible cut in your base in, in Indy, but you had an incredible concentration of people that were gathering or that were you know, watching you online in Chicago. And yeah. so how do you turn something that's accidental and multiply it by becoming something intentional for them to form a community and even reach more people in that area? So great yeah. job. Yeah, so Tell we- us about Chicago. Say that again? Oh, the, yeah, so just one of the things that we learned from the, sorry, I'll, I'll go to video now so I can actually, I'm a real person here. Uh, one of the things that we learned from the uh, team, the tech advisory team, so we have a text that we use, text in church, and we use a 317 number, that's our area code. And so one of the things they taught us is that when you don't have a relationship with someone, they want to use short codes. Um, in, in this space, like an actual number 317 feels more personal and they don't know you yet. And so we hadn't been using short codes outside of our region. And so we haven't established it yet, but we're going to do a short code, you know, text Chicago to 7756 or whatever. Um, so that was just simple learning from us for that, that tech advisory council to say, this is what we know from the marketplace when you don't have an established relationship and you want to do texting, you need to do short codes. Pretty good. 
All right, so next. <clears throat> Um, I talked a little bit about this already, um, that we're trying to get this separate website um, with our, our HubSpot contract now um, to do this lead capture. So we just had a proposal come in from a company we work with. Again, we posted it in our group for our tech advisory council and they're ripping it apart right now um, to try to get us a better deal to negotiate with who's you know, doing the work and try to get us some extra you know, bandwidth in that space. So that's been great. Um, we haven't done much with this um, Facebook community, and so what we're going to try to do is once we know who more and more of these individuals are, is we'll start this community by building um, the Facebook groups, so we haven't done that yet. Um, and then we're also training some volunteers to take over the live stream, so I have my first live stream host training this Sunday, so uh, we host our live stream at 11.15. And so we're just gathering a group. We're starting small. I think we're going to start with a team of four, um, but people in the church who actually want to be part of that kind of live stream host slash pastor role and engage some of that just to, again, give us some additional bandwidth, but to get some of our people behind what we're doing. Um, and so we're also raising up a volunteer role, role called an online guide where we're going to have some of our people, once someone's identified virtually, that they kind of walk alongside them um, in their journey, even though they're not going to be in the same, you know, church, same space from a physical perspective. Yeah. So you guys are all overachievers out there. So one thing is you don't have to put the learnings in, in the future stuff, because that's the step after you've tried an experiment or that's where you put the learnings in. So you've get done above and beyond by putting your learnings, your pre-learnings even before you've tried to run the experiment. But thank you, Denise and team. Yeah. Let's move on to Echo. And see, what we might have there. Maybe it's Darren. Maybe it's uh, Eric. Darren. I have a question for Lisa. Oh, hey. Well, let me go back then. Okay. Um, hey, Lisa. Just a quick question. You guys are in Indiana, but you visited Chicago and went to the Salesforce. Um, visited San Francisco and went to the Salesforce Tower. If I understand that. So this is Denise. Sorry. So um, we actually there's a Salesforce Tower in Indianapolis. Ah, uh, so okay. we were we were at the Salesforce Tower in Indianapolis. Got it. Okay. okay, we thought there was only one, and it's in San Francisco, but I guess so. Yeah, no, there's that's one. How, thing. That's how Jake thinks, man. He's the center of the universe, right, Jake? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Echo. Darren, is you going to be there? Felipe, Koa. Echo, 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 echo. <laughs> it's the summer play card. <laughs> okay, we can come back to them. Uh, Faith Promise. Mike, are you there? Yeah, this is Aaron. Um, I'm here. I think Sean Reese is on here also. He didn't want to be in the same office as me. It's a little hurtful, oh, but yeah. we'll go with that anyway. I got a giant TV, so, you know. <laughs> I think we're ready. Walk us through this, Aaron. Sure. Um, actually, what I would say are the three items we started working on. Um, the first two, we've kind of deviated a little bit and didn't didn't completely spell that out. Um, the biggest thing we focused on, and I'll spend most of the time, is on the the third item, which is uh, an, a campus insight report. So essentially, what we're trying to do is identify what all, whatever metrics or analytics we can um, to begin to measure all sorts of different things at campuses. So we already had a ton of data. So we're trying to pull that information together to figure out what do we need to measure to determine, you know, why are things working or not working? Um, so we've built out a, a document that has, uh, you know, what we have to this point as far as metrics. And it, it kind of color codes it on performance, so it's easy to see quickly which campuses are doing well in different areas. Um, so the, the ultimate goal for us in this is to uh, be able to take the, the data and ultimately provide insights to campuses. So there's all sorts of metrics and analytics, but campus pastors, you know, it'll be overwhelming. So we're gonna try to identify the two or three things that we notice for their specific campus, sit down with them, kind of help them brainstorm. And ultimately that's where Sean and his team 
kind of come in. I'm more on the, the data analytics side, but he, he'll come in and he can help with, you know, how do we need to message differently? How do we need to communicate differently? Um, you know, so some of the challenges and the things we've learned at this point is you can measure anything and everything. So it's making sure we're not just measuring ourselves to death, but that we have a purpose behind what we're measuring and that we're measuring the right things, the things that actually will help us move forward. Um, and so that's, that's probably the biggest takeaway for us. Yeah. And if I can just say one thing about that. So everything, it, most of the time when you're looking for a date, a piece of data, you have to ask yourself the question, kind of like what you've done here, but what difference would it make if we knew that number? Mm -hmm. or those numbers and sometimes you don't know you know I, I encourage you to collect as much data as you can because sometimes the insight you know the insight always comes from combining pieces of data right but so it's not going to hurt to do it but in some ways if it, it, it the you know as we say the enemy of actionable is interesting right and i think you just need to drill down so what so what is it with so what that we have that so what that the statistic is you know, what does it mean when it, you know, there's a 50% variance between campuses. Now that's something worth exploring, you know? Right. So, yeah. And I think like you started on a couple other things then too. What's that? Aaron, you started on a couple other things, those first two things that. Yeah. So um, one of the things I would say is as, as we came back, um, the uh, Sean and Micah and their team have kind of reshifted some focus to, to some things where they can move the, move the needle a little bit further. Um, right. So the connection points, I think Sean's still working through that as far as how do people enter. I think it's taken a secondary role. So um, part of what we're working on right now is uh, moving one of our campus locations. So we're actually have utilized glue um, and Sean's been working a lot on this about how to specifically target people in that campus, in that community to let them know that, hey, Faith Promise is here. We're moving you know, we're essentially moving closer to the city center where that community is. So we're trying to utilize glue and some specific data from the campus to pinpoint who should we market to, um, even to pinpoint people who used to come to the campus and don't any longer. So we know at some, maybe, maybe they had moved a little bit further away or for whatever reason, now there's a new thing about Faith Promise in the community that they can come to. Um, so I think that's pulled Sean's focus a lot off of some of these items more on to a specific project that's going on, but, um, he's, you know, he can speak to that as well, but he's leveraging glue and the data piece to try to figure out how do we become more efficient in our marketing and in our targeting of that community. Um, and then the second item, as far as the next steps classes, um, we've, that's really kind of moved to another team to focus on. So uh, I think Sean and Micah have kind of uh, moved past that. There's a, a something different we need to do there internally. So we're trying to realign more around how we, how do we use data to both figure out where campuses should be, how do we help them move forward and things like that. So it's a little bit realignment right now. Great. How about going forward? Yeah, so I think ultimately our plan would be to develop the full strategy of what are we trying to accomplish? Um, you know, I think it's easy for us to get caught in. There's a lot of cool things we can do, just like a lot of data we can measure. There's a lot of cool activities we can take, but we really need to lay out what's our strategy? What are we ultimately trying to accomplish as we move people along? Um, and then that second item. And that's, really, the, that, that's to really define the whole growth journey, isn't it? Yes. So, um, uh -huh. You know, that's one of the things Sean laid out. He, he, could, he could probably share it. He's got this mind map that's just crazy about all the different ways people enter um, Faith Promise and all the potential points uh, that we can connect them. And then, you know, then it's really taking them through the next steps. What's the next connection point once they've, they've hit a certain point? And, uh, and I think that's something we'll dive a little bit more into um, post campus move that we're working on right now. Um, but, uh, you know, Sean has done a great job. He's identified all those entry points and what they look like, what, you know, what are the big ones? Where are people really stepping in and coming in? Um, and where are ones where maybe just a few people? Okay, let's not focus there. Let's focus on the priorities, uh, on the ones we can really needle on. Um, 
and then I think once what we'll do with that is is we utilize next steps classes which is our growth track I think ultimately once we move that plan forward we'll begin to test some things at our next steps classes to identify you know how do we move people along that journey like you said and, and how do we connect them and then move them across um, and then the last thing, what we're going to move forward from here as far as like just the insights and data we pull is to begin to meet with the campuses themselves and uh, really dive into, you know, with just initial run of data. We've identified there's some campuses that for whatever reason, um, you know, they're not growing in kids at the same level every other campus or maybe they're declining. That gives us a specific insight. So clearly the overall strategy works if five campuses are moving forward. So really diving in with that campus. Hey, what, what might be happening at your campus? And sitting down, meeting with them, start to ask questions and even potentially go back and pull more data to try to really dig down into what's happening. And then if we, you know, once we kind of figure out a strategy, Sean can work to, to uh, market and, and really uh, pinpoint the people who need to come to, to those yeah. So, super job, Aaron. So one thing that I want to commit to memory and encourage you guys to do is this. The per when people say, what are you doing? What are you doing in this data thing? Is we're trying to turn hypothesis into facts. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, so I just got off a, we do some, uh, uh, Brent and I do some work with churches around, uh, it's a partnership that we have in McKinsey with Consulting. And it's really a data-driven thing, but we're just having a follow-up call right before this one. And one of the things they discovered when they started planting the church, the pastor's hypothesis was, is that it's about relationships. And so he would have, he and his wife started a monthly dinner that they had for newcomers uh, when they were just a, a church plant. Now they're about church 2,500. They still do it once a month. They have about 40 people a month. But, the, but his theory was, if we can get them to know me, to know our family and be in a kind of a meal setting, it's going to increase the stickiness. Mm. And what they found from day one was that if a person attends that dinner, 83% of those people consistently over the years have joined the, the new members class. Mm. You know, so they turned to hypothesis. We yeah. think that if we give access to the senior pastor, you know, and his wife and family, it'll increase stickiness. Now all of a sudden that hypothesis is a fact. So they'd never ever think about going back and doing something else. You well, know, and, and actually that's, that's better, but they've yeah, turned that hypothesis into a fact. And so how great would it be yeah. two or three years from now, you know, these guys, here's, here's the way that works. If we do this after the first visit, if we do this, it increases the, the second visit by this much, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I, think, I, th I think the great thing about that is what we see sometimes on the other end, we'll, we'll hear these crazy hypotheses, you know, where a campus pastor may see some data and say, some crazy thing and, and it's making sure we pinpoint back to, hey, that's really not what's happening based on this other set of data. So I think it goes, it's like you're saying, it goes really both ways. You could spend a lot of energy trying to solve a problem that doesn't really exist. Right. If, if you're not, you know, validating the and testing against the hypothesis. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's correlation and causation type thing. So yeah. good, good, good stuff there. Uh, Grace is on vacation, but we got Jake. We got the highlight of our of our sprint called Jake. Oh, yeah. hey, man. It's to the promised right. land. So, so hi, this is Jake from Menlo Church. So here's a confession, and um, Brooke and I both shared a school in Berkeley, and I still have nightmares about missing missing exams, even after decades away from school. So that's the weakness I have. So I have to admit to these guys because we're just failing the exam. But on the other hand. What we're picking up from the this accelerator is really valuable. So it's a, a question of when we apply it. Um, so let me talk about uh, what we are doing. We did do an, an, an net promoter score. I guess we should use a different term for one of our venues in May. And we learned about uh, uh, the value of that in a church setting. And we reviewed that at the accelerator. We just haven't gotten going uh, on, on uh, expanding it to the other sites. Part of it is, um, and this sounds like an excuse. Um, we, uh, we have a staff shortfall of about 20% just existing positions for various reasons, right? The cost of living in the Bay Area. So we're just trying to keep 
uh, the church going. Every, uh, the engine is really straining. So we just haven't been able to focus on it. Um, that said, uh, we're learning from the tip sheets. Uh, I had a call with the glue representative. Um, the need to look at data is increasingly important. We will continue to do the NPS. We have created, and it's not on this chart, our own version of uh, the attract, get, keep, grow, multiply. The good news is we're, we're honing in on that journey and we can, um, we can create hypotheses at different stages of that journey and start to do these kind of experiments. Uh, then I guess to Denise's point in the tech advisory, we've got a lot of congregants here. I'll say we're not leveraging them, but we did one of our congregants who is an executive at Amazon did create a white paper for us. I'm happy to uh, share that, Julia. I, I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll send it to you or I'll put it on the Facebook page. Uh, it's really fascinating uh, thoughts that uh, he has on what we can do on digital. Uh, and then um, uh, as we move forward, what I'd say is um, the whole notion of turning hypothesis into facts. Um, <laughs> actually, one yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the, the challenges we have that I'm finding is there are a certain set of beliefs and assumptions, and I'm trying to get us to move away from beliefs and assumptions into hypotheses. We got to do that before we can turn it into facts, because right now, uh, you know, for those of us who come from multi-site churches from the heartland but not the coast, or those who have done church the traditional way, there are some long-held beliefs and assumptions, so I'm just trying to a chip away of that. So that's kind of where we're at. And uh, even though we are failing the exam, uh, we're still learning a lot from this group. So thank you to all of you. And, and Jake, thanks. what is this sheet you sent me here? Is this a dream you have at night? And you're filling for the last print. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> see? Did you see why we love Jake so much? Total authenticity. Total kick butt making progress. Uh, uh, much we'll get with them. So, Jake, thank you. Okay, Southeast Christian is they they are not on the call, but they did send in this slide, and I don't. I'll just include it with us. St. Andrews is going through a leadership change right now, so they they're they're on vacation. That's Newport Beach on a very 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 best day. Um, but we, we have the meeting house here. Audrey, are you online here? Meeting house, Audrey, Josh, Leah? Okay, I think they might be out, but they did get a, do a great job of putting their slides in. And now we come to Jim uh, of the Southern, the, the Southern Bay Area Venture, the jewel of Los Altos. So you want to take us through that? Who's going to take us through that? Is that going to be you, Grace, or Jake? Yeah. Jake and I can both it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that one was an old slide, so you can move to the next okay. one. Okay. Let me go to the next one. Is it this one? Yeah. Yes. So looking at the keep strategy, uh, part the key part of our strategy, we started Saturday nights at Venture. And initially, we were just going to do one a month, but we decided we were going to do something a little lighter, but good community building every Saturday night from early June through mid-August. And on Father's Day weekend, Saturday night, we did a car show and a barbecue. We had almost 500 people out for that, and a bunch of community folks showed up as well just because of the car show. Uh, our average, we have probably one to 200. I don't know that we've actually done counts, but we've set up our back lawn area. Uh, we have some nights we bring in an ice cream truck or a shaved ice truck. And some nights we've had food. We did a, a movie night. We showed Lego 2 and it was 160 that stuck around for the movie. There was more than that that ate the hot dogs, probably 250 or 300 <laughs> stuck around for the hot dogs yeah. and, and such. Uh, but it's, it's created I think a good hangout vibe on Saturday night right. and uh, a great story that we just heard. Uh, there's a new family that started attending on the first night that we had our summer nights and she is the experience director for Apple 
And she was talking with Monica, who organizes this, and she says, who's, who's responsible for this? And uh, she gave kudos to Monica and said, you know, you've done a great job with this. It's not cheesy. Uh, my family really feels welcome, and we're coming back. So that's been a good retention piece. Yeah, yeah that's, I'll tell you, that's a great marker. And so one of the one of the feedback we got out of the last one from people that were not coming from the Bay Area was that could we tap into some of these people, right. you know, when we're out there again uh, in next April? And so that'd be a good person to kind of get to know is what is how could how could we help her? How could you know she do one of those little half hour presentations that we do at like one o'clock in the afternoon on on the second day? Sure. On yeah. Here That'd be awesome. So, awesome. I, so I just got excited as you guys were sharing this. I'm thinking about you know bringing in a couple of food trucks, but it would be the place to go on Saturday night with the family because people right. are always looking for fun stuff. My we're going. I'm going on a family bike ride tonight in our community, and there'll be two or three hundred people. But I'm going with my daughter and grandkids and her husband and blah blah blah. But it's just sort of like people are looking for stuff to do, and if you had like you know, Toy Story 3 or, or, or whatever, and, and uh, food trucks, it'd be phenomenal. So yeah. I really, really praise your creativity there. It has been stickiness for our congregation for after service, and they hang out, and they get to meet new families, and um, yeah. they doing a great job, like, kicking it. And it's just, I think, for new people, for people, it's a way to invite someone that's not threatening, and it's been, actually, I think having it weekly has been something people have been looking forward to. It's not a huge number, but it's actually the faithful, right. the faithful family crowd. Probably one third to a half of our Saturday night attenders stick around afterwards. Excellent. Excellent. That's a, that'd be a good number to know. Yeah. So then uh, also part of our KEEP strategy, we've kind of nailed down our first step and next step pathway. And like you mentioned, the meal with the pastor, that was one of Tim's things when he came is let's do a pastor's lunch. And so uh, we've had really good attendance. We just did two weeks ago our first step. And we had 37 people come to it with eight countries represented, very diverse. The following week, uh, 21 of them came back for our lunch. Um, Tim hosted that as well as other staff. But like you said, it's a good chance to get to know him, hear his story, hear his heart and vision for the church. Then next step follows that. We're not doing it over the summer. We're going to actually, we are doing Discover Your Design, but in the fall, we're, we'll do Discover Your Design is next step. And then Discover Discipleship which includes an assessment to help people figure out where are they on the discipleship journey and how can they grow in their faith. And then we've kind of mapped out our discipleship pathway and plan on rolling that out this fall. No, that's really good. So this is a great opportunity to gather data uh, on the fallout, on the, you know, is this thing that grows as people move down the pipeline or, you know, what's, what's a healthy top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel on that thing. So I, I think it's really good what you guys are doing. Yeah, What's the next thing there? So the next thing is a attract. And we had said to increase our engagement in social and paid and organic. I think the focus was a little more organic this time, but with an effort on our volunteer social media team. So the exciting thing was I just noticed that we did increase on Facebook by 30% of our base of followers. Um, other areas, we're still working on it, and we could do a lot more. I've noticed that we less focus on events, more on candidates and life on life. And I think someone else from, I can't remember from where, mentioned this a while back, but just more casual. And I've noticed a lot of posts from churches, how can we pray for you? We do that often, but maybe more of a little specific to our area. Like, did you know that this is happening at Venture? Did you know that we have a mom's group that meets over the summer? I think that because our crowd, there is the folks that we're trying to track, but then there's that regular crew that's following us on social. So um, the we were intentional and we're recruiting new volunteers. We doubled it. We went from three active individuals to six. And I love that it's multi-generational so that we have 
uh, the younger voice, we have a voice that's more experienced that knows sort of the area or just age-wise, and then a mix of cultures. So they are commenting and saying, hey, Grace, we'd like to see more posts, more scriptural posts that kind of follow up a reflection from what Tim said or Chip said or whoever has spoken this past weekend. And that's been helpful. And then I'd like to just see our, just our social be a little more organized. But if anyone out there um, has, that's been doing social can give me some feedback on what's been successful and using glue with the social, you know, let me know. I'm putting that out there. Yeah, good, good, good stuff. So one of the guys I hope you introduce you to next time, it's kind of John Windsor and John's recognized by Harvard um, uh, business school as the most innovative person in co-creation. And he said basically that every, he, I had him in for another gathering, but he says that, that in every area, co-creation takes place except the church. And it's almost, you know, it's sort of a one-way sermon every week, but that type of uh, information communication, the style of communication is kind of, it just, it's just it's becoming more and more scarce. And so by having people be able to um, uh, share your social posts, they become co-creators. They become, they move into the multipliers. They're multiplying the mission of the church and it's just not consuming it. Right. Let's go on to your, what's, going forward, what do you want to get done? So going forward, we do want, we are in a rebrand of our website, physical signage and all print by our fall launch is one of, oh, the second one was Dave. <laughs> So that, okay, so anyways, that's the first point in terms of communications. We want to do that. We also want to measure, um, I do want to start using glue. That's why I put that out there for those who've been using it a few times. Like just what you'd recommend, what areas should we use glue with the, with the um, pathway, the discipleship pathway, using glue there or using glue beyond for some reason, I've been thinking glue as a use of outreach attraction like Easter and Christmas, but I'd like to use glue for something that to help keep those who've been coming and helping them grow in their walk. So if Good. you want to speak on that. No, fantastic. Fantastic. Let's go on to Westgate. They're just, they're, you know, they're just waiting with bated breath there to contribute. I'm not Can't sure. Wait. <laughs> Um, it's unfortunate because both uh, Dave and Les are not here. They're the ones that are actually managing all of this. But um, I will kind of give some clarity in regards to our existing status in identifying the aches that leadership have been uh, bringing towards our way. We actually um, did something pretty that we just ended uh, a week ago, and that is a series that we did called Roadside System. We talked about our, our whole congregation through uh, three aspects that we learned from them. So it was the aches that we got from our people when we did a survey of uh, key leadership uh, that there was questions surrounding uh, loneliness in the Bay Area, uh, how to manage tech, and how to parent well. And so we did a 10-week series on those three areas. And through that, we, um, we initiated something called meetups. And so uh, we took our entire staff and we just said, tell us the things that you're going to be doing over the next couple months and uh, create a, a spreadsheet on a, on a Google Drive. And then we will create a vehicle by which to invite people in our congregation to just join you in whatever it is. So golfing, uh, hiking, uh, bike riding, uh, surfing, I mean, it, cooking, watching Daniel Prose. Say that one more time. July. Yeah. Getting back from this has been pretty profound. Uh, that the, just the connection point that, that people were making has given them new. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. You're freezing. Silicon Valley issue. Yeah. These are jams and we're missing them. Uh, there's just so much internet traffic in Silicon Valley that that's what happened. <laughs> it's, it's the thing. And we're still running on twisted pear out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do want to say one thing while those guys are offline. 
or, or those guys are frozen. But what a great example of how to use first party data. And sometimes we don't need the third party data to give us the insight to those things. We just need to, when they surveyed people, what were their biggest issues? Man, look at those things, you know, the, the aches that they have and what they long for and then immediately address those things. That's great use of data right there. But it's first party data, or the most valuable data we can get. We'll see if Westgate can jump back on. Any other thoughts? I mean, do you guys, do you guys see that yourselves on the value of first party data, just taking a survey or an assessment with your people? I was at uh, Doxa Church, which used to be at Driscoll's. They, they have text in church, and just in the middle of the sermon, the senior pastor said, hey, I want to get some feedback. feedback. So everybody text this. And so it launched a little uh, survey right there in the middle of the service. And it's just like a three or four question survey that he actually responded to in the middle of the, uh, in the sermon, getting the primary data just immediate like that using texting. That's amazing, Tom. And I think to run experiments like that, maybe during the summer, that's when it, you do something like that or try something in the fall. But just to see, just where people have a, a chance to actually contribute to the outcome of the sermon, mm -hmm. which is what people are used to doing, you know, and nobody, everybody wants to contribute, but it's always the shortage of social space where they can do it. I, I felt my pastor was doing the same thing. He taught on Romans 13 was saying, you know, we need to be subject to the government. And I, I said, well, and I, I just wrote him a letter. He's a good friend of mine. But I said, you know, that people will either, depending on who's in power, We'll either camp out on Revelation or Romans 13 on our, our view of government, which is submit to every, you know, their authorities of God, or Revelation 13 when the beast is in power and submission to authority is the absolute opposite we want to do. So people either characterize the time we're living in now as the time of the beast or the time of, you know, the savior. And, uh, but I, I would like, to, I would love to have some discussion, you know, a, a, a second sermon on that, you know, to give some feedback on that. You know, civil disobedience or something. So, so it looks like it looks like oh, um, Westgate. Maybe they had an earthquake. Who knows, Jake? Maybe we'll uh, feel it, some. It, 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 well, hey there. <laughs> we lost you. Oh, okay, Danny, we lost you. So you were just waxing eloquent. Yeah, I don't know. I know. I don't know where you lo we lost you, but I was talking about the meetups and how we're we're yeah. with positive feedback in regards to engagement. And uh, this is actually helping us increase leaders. So uh, what, what we did was already talk to the people that we, that we have kept and we pushed them into as best we can, those who we wanted to keep, we wanted to grow, those who we've got growing, actually multiplying. And so uh, we, we've been pretty pleased with that. The follow-up to that series, we just started this past weekend, it's called Open Table. And uh, its subtitle is Recovering the Virtue of Hospitality. So we're going to be wow. doing some weeks on hospitality so that we can really engage our people to get out and attract and hopefully get some folks. That, uh, so we're, we're, we're kind of working the, the back side of the model to the front side of the model so that we can then uh, get, back to our, get back to our normal rhythm um, at the fall kickoff when we start a big series, a joint series that we're doing several churches. I love what you said, but I mean, you're using that to surface and develop leaders too, because they're actually leading. It's not a class; they're actually doing something, right? The meetups. Yeah, exactly. How about, have you covered your going forward stuff yet? No. Um, one of the things that we're doing internally uh, is we, because we've been working with the team, we have a lot of initiatives. In fact, Matt is going to be out here with a couple other we've got folks next week. We're we're kicking off a lot of some of the new and testing an initiative with Glue on predict, predictive uh, giving. And started working with Generis. We have a capital campaign that's uh, looming on the horizon. So uh, a lot of irons in the fire here. But um, one of the things that we're working with our staff is uh, we're, we're in, inviting them into a thing called pitch sessions. Uh, we're going to start in, in um, September, where we're going to basically have uh, tables in our all staff pitch ideas. Uh, that would help improve Westgate and we're going to give them specific things regarding, you know, what we're working towards here that uh, that are, are centered around our aches and 
what each table is going to basically vote on one great idea. And then that table, each table will then pre present the best idea. And then collectively we'll, we'll pick one of those ideas that was pitched that day. And over the next three months, we're going to try and make that not just, as you say, Eric, it's an interesting idea, making it a very actionable idea. So um, yeah. we're, we're approaching this from several different angles and we're trying to engage now, not what this team has just been doing with the executive leadership. Now we're actually taking it into our entire staff. Yeah, I, I, I love that, Dan. Gosh, it just makes me wish I could be so part of this whole thing. Um, a couple of years ago, I read a book by a guy named Warren Claff called How to Pitch Anything. And it's really one of the best books I've read on the topic. And you might look at an overview or outline, but it's basically five, it's five slides. And for those people, have, if you had a format for presenting their pitch ideas, they'll probably be, be able to create a value proposition with a lot more clarity and the call to action more clear too. So you'll have kind of a better outcome. I just want to throw that in there. Oh, I'll, I'll look at that. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Hey, hey Dan, Willow, Dan, I have a question for Dan. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jake. And uh, this is, um, uh, the question is almost in the form of a pre-hypothesis. To the extent that you're, you're in the Bay Area too, I mean, for us, it'd be near first party data if we say loneliness, tech and parent well are, are, are issues you know, that are hitting our congregation as well. Um, have you thought about, uh, in, in addition to the sermon series, using podcasts to go deeper into each of those three areas so there's more engagement or have you kicked any, any, anything like that around? Yeah, we actually had some supplemental um, devotionals attached to it, but we found that people weren't really um, getting really uh, involved with that as much. And so we're, we're back to square one on trying to figure out better web methods. You know, podcasts, we've talked about that, but um, we put, put stuff up on Facebook and uh, we just didn't see the kind of um, viewership that we were hoping for. So trying to figure out other ways. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for asking. Uh, Willow, Mike uh, Shintani uh, told me this week he's kind of taking on a more permanent role there at Willow. He was coming in as a consultant, but he's kind of doing children's stuff, so they're kind of revamping who will be on their data team. Um, going forward, action steps, shoot, join the crowd, take a vacation. <laughs> Second point is, though, is that keep on experimenting. I love what, the way you guys are doing this. Uh, but you just, it's, it, it's in an uncertain world, you're not going to know what to do. You just have to have some hypothesis of what might work. I think, what, Dan, what you guys are doing of having a, a regular time of, of pitching ideas to make Westgate better, and that might be the first question you have. I've, I've often envisioned every, every Thursday or Friday, whatever the last day of your work day is, from three to five, starting with a problem you're trying to solve and bringing all the staff and volunteers that want to be part of that into a kind of a session where you break around tables, you know, and just start solving problems because everybody has a desire to contribute to the outcomes. Right. So I did go through that build, measure, learn cycle. And again, it's all validated learning. No such thing as failure. It's what you learn from trying stuff. And that's a great culture to do. Um, next sprint, August 28th. At some time, and I think I want to postpone this, but I, I, we're going to have a webinar on data visualization, which is really, really important. But I think we'll wait till after the next sprint when everyone's off vacation and we're into the year. So sometime after the, that August 28th, we'll pull together another webinar on, uh, on data visualization before we come together. Last slide is... Uh, <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I have very few pictures of myself standing up, and that's in April. We went on vacation with another couple down to Cancun, so that was our 4 o'clock smoking cigar picture with Bob. Bob's an all-pro guy for the Broncos, and so every four we'd be out there smoking a cigar, so they made an apron for me for an event. Actually, it was kind of fun. I think I told you about it. I, I cooked for uh, the 77 Broncos uh, uh, Super Bowl team, the defense, the Orange Crush. That was about three or four weeks ago. It was really fun. Hey, Eric. Yeah. You know, you sent that picture of the biscuits and gravy. What you, yeah. what, what you didn't send was the risk recipe for that gravy, man. It is the best ever. Yeah, and I think, Dan, didn't I give you a uh, – who has, who has the chap – or the, uh, the chap wizard? If you've got a chap wizard in the mail and you can't remember who it's from, you need to read your emails because it's from me. 
and I also enclosed my world's best guacamole. Jake, I know Jake, I got a note from Jake saying that he got his. When you make this guacamole and the, and the bacon goes all the way down to the bottom of the bowl, we might see the biblical thing happening in Book of Acts where they just said, the guacamole of a God and not a man, and they start worshiping you, but, but then give glory to God lest you be eaten by worms. It's, it's that good. I can attest. Uh, I've, I've had that guacamole. It's amazing. Yeah, and Dan, I'll, I'll send you the, the biscuits and gravy one. Awesome. Okay, so flag it. Flag it. This is your first experience with a, a sprint for the Engagement Accelerator. What's your thoughts? I uh, have heard more creative ideas in a short amount of time than I've experienced in a long time in the church. Along Good. with uh, just the structure around accountability goals, um, measurement, it's just, it's great, Eric. You, I love what you're doing. Well, I love all these guys in this church and the men and women here. They're just doing such a good job. But I think it's a, this is just our second sprint. We'll have six of them during the time. And I just encourage you to just guys kind of jump in as you can, Tom, and maybe even join us out in Boulder when we're here, uh, out here in Boulder in October. Oh. You know, under, under, the, under the rubric of, of doing research. Oh, that's, that's correct, of course. <laughs> you and Anna come out a couple days early. What are the dates for Boulder again, Eric? Um, the dates of it are Julia. What are the I dates? Of the, I don't have dates? it up right now, but they should be we'll, posted we'll, on we'll Facebook. Post, we'll, we'll post these on Facebook. But I, I really pre I, I think this is so much fun being with you guys in this journey. And I just, I, you know, I just mentioned a couple times, just kind of how my heart kind of leaps when I see the things you're trying, and. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people, they're just so discouraged because they don't have that freedom just to try stuff. And uh, so it's, it's super what, what you guys are doing. And, and I'm serious, that last slide of, of I'm always available. Um, you know, I have team leaders, I have your numbers. I try to stay in touch with you regularly. If, if you want me to call you, send me your cell phone and I'll put you on my list to kind of give a little uh, rhythm with. But, uh, but that's about it. You guys done a great job and we're, we're eight minutes under time. So, yeah. Super job. Any closing remarks by anybody? Anybody want to say anything? Superb. Okay, guys. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks, Eric.